Welcome back to Tied Up with the Morgans. We got a lot of rain, thunder. At six o'clock in the evening, it looked like it was 9 p.m. It was crazy. Uh, I just came over here to check on the goats. The barn's all dry, everything's good there, and just got a little bit of sun. It is 8.03 p.m. right now. It was a beautiful day for the first half of the day, and around two o'clock it started to rain until now hard we got a lot of rain in a short time uh, like i said it was really sunny earlier beautiful hot even it dropped 10 degrees lots of rain and first time seeing the sun since like one o'clock so that's nice anyways i'm gonna see if we can dive into the trees right now uh we have 40 minutes till dark maybe sooner till a storm i don't know um so we're gonna head out into the woods and see how far we get headed towards my dad's house. We're going to continue diving into the different species we have from my house to my dad's. And just along that trail, not uh, the whole property, because I know there's some more on the property we probably won't pass. Maybe we'll dive into that more one day. But for now, let's get into the woods. All right, it's a new day. I did not get rained out. I had a lot of good video in the woods. Got home to take a look at all of it, and it was very blurry. Um, you can still see it, but... Uh, it was it was dark and my phone makes it uh, somewhat brighter, but it just really loses the quality. So we're going to head back into the woods and reshoot all that. But anyways, uh, I believe it was for Thea's birthday party this year. Uh, our neighbor, neighbor Cliff, that you've probably heard in uh, videos in, of my dad's channel, uh, they and their granddaughter got Thea uh, this butterfly caterpillar thing i don't know what you call um house uh, enclosure anyways we had a few uh black swallowtail caterpillars on our parsley this year they love parsley and we put them in here and we've been feeding them parsley and cilantro and they have been in Let, let's turn this camera around we got ty's arrows here ty's shooting every single day but anyways we have right here the chrysalis There's one, and then here's the other here. And I just released the third one. There were three caterpillars, and the other one was just a butterfly. I didn't get any video of the release. Here's why. Actually, the whole release was kind of just a mess. So Kate and the kids are in State College right now, and they're playing with Bo and hanging out with Hannah and having a good time just for a couple of days. And uh, I just got home from work, and of course, while I got home, while the kids are gone, one butterfly, or one of the chrysalis is now a butterfly. And uh, the kids missed it, so I FaceTimed them to show them it. They were so excited to see the butterfly. You know, they knew, they've been taking care of it, they've been putting in all this stuff, and he's been in the chrysalis for, like, over two weeks, I would say. It's been a long time. And anyways, the kids were so excited for it, and now they finally saw it on FaceTime as a butterfly. And I was, I didn't get a video of it because I was on FaceTime. And just as I'm about to release it, I was showing them on FaceTime. They're all excited. I had a phone call come in and they could no longer see the camera. I thought they could. I released it. They missed it. I missed the call. It was just a mess. Well, anyways, and I, and I got no video of it, but that's okay. Because we have two more caterpillars in here and uh, the kids will be back tomorrow. So we should be able to release them tomorrow for the kids to uh, see. So assuming they are butterflies tomorrow. Uh, I think they're pretty close, but we'll see. Here's the boys. They're really doing a number on uh, this little area. It seems they are not touching the dog bane, like was a concern, or the Indian hemp uh, is what it's also known as. I see a lot of still grass. Seems like they're not really preferring the still grass, which is what I've read. I've heard that they don't prefer still grass. That's all right. Um, I've seen them eat it some, but it seems that they kind of try things and then move on. But uh, yeah, they're really, this area looks totally different. They're doing a good job. Uh, there used to be a huge, all of this used to be swamp milkweed. And uh, due to some, uh, some dirt moving, it never came back with the uh, skid loader a couple years ago. Unfortunately, none of that came back. Uh, the last remaining one is over here. Swamp milkweed's a favorite milkweed of mine, favorite plant of mine. 
And this is it in flower. Beautiful plant. And it's a milkweed. So it's a host plant for monarchs. Most species can't feed on it because it's toxic to them. Whereas the, the monarchs have evolved over time where they can tolerate that and they're dependent on it. You can see a little seed pod right here starting. This. Uh, there's a few more around, not in this area. More so over there is a big wetland swamp area and there's a bunch in there. And it seems, so like two years ago, we had a whole bunch in this area, tons. And they were loaded with monarch caterpillars. Haven't seen any in two years, at our yard at least. And two days ago, we saw a huge monarch caterpillar on this swamp milkweed plant. And now I don't see him. So one of two things happened. He was a big boy. So he may be in the pupa stage. He may be a chrysalis right now. And when they do that, they do not do it on this plant. They usually leave somewhere safer. So he could be on a surrounding plant right now, um, possible. Or what's even more likely, I would say, is a bird got him. So that's a bummer, but that's, uh, that's how it goes. So we just need to keep planting more milkweed. And also he needs more cover. This thing's kind of a sitting caterpillar, you know, a sitting, sitting duck because there's not a whole lot of cover. It's just one milkweed plant. There's a lot of shorter species around, but anyways, this is about trees. We just got off topic because we came to check on the goats. So let's get to the woods and uh, identify some trees. We just gave the mule a really good bath the other day because it was caked in mud. Um, so we're gonna take the mule out. Reason being, I got a lot I gotta do tonight. And uh, when I walk in the woods, I really take my time. And what I mean by that is I'm looking at every plant and uh, a short walk could turn into a two hour walk. So we're gonna use the mule right now. But I, one thing I love about this, uh, it's a six seater, right? But you can fold the back seat up to give you more of a bed. So really cool. Perfect for us. We normally just have the car seats in here, but with all the rain, we had the car seats out. And uh, when we were cleaning it, we took the car seats out, so it was easier to clean the bed out. But yeah, I love that feature. This thing's great. And there's that second row now. Shorter bed, which we usually have it like this and uh, can fit quite a bit. What I like too, whether the bed is extended and the second row is folded or if it's second rows like this and the bed is shorter, you can still dump it. So I think that's a really cool feature. It'll dump no matter what. I would say my only complaint about the mule, I have one, maybe two. I guess I have two. The first being that there was like a four month, four month maybe? Yeah, I think it was four month recall. And it was a do not drive. So Kawasaki had no fix for four months, told you don't drive it. So that was a, a big pain, not happy about that. But anyways, the other thing, other than this, there's really no complaints. I love this machine. We use this all the time. It's perfect for our family, perfect for everything we do here. Uh, the other thing is, and I guess, I think it's pretty common in mules, maybe in previous years as well. The roof here, I feel like it holds 30 gallons of water. Uh, we keep ours outside. Uh, we are planning to build a shed to keep it in, just, it's on the list. But anyways, uh, the way these things have these grooves, uh, it's unbelievable how much water it holds. Normally I'll get the blower and little uh, battery blower and blow it all out. Uh, Cause if you don't, as soon as you start driving and where I park this, it's right when I leave the parking spot, it's a steep hill. All that water comes and gets on the back seat, gets the kids always so the kids get soaked so holds a lot of water only complaint now let's get into the woods and look at some trees Deer to the left of me, uh, some fawns. 
she's in my way. That's where I want to go. And uh, I'm not backing down. Yeah, there you guys go. Those deer still hanging out, even when I got out of the side by side. So, first tree today I want to show you. And a couple people have asked if we have any on the property, and we do. Not a whole lot, but we have them right here. It's black gum, uh, black topello as another name. And uh, yeah, this is it right here. So, what do we know about the black gum? Well, uh, it produces a fruit that really benefits wildlife. Uh, they love it. We know that it gets a beautiful flower in the spring. There's also a swamp topello, uh, which is pretty similar. Really, the difference is, is where they're growing, though. The black gum, the black topello right here, is going to be growing more in uplands, better soils, whereas the swamp topello is going to be growing more in like a swamp, heavier, more wet clay soil, stuff like that. Places like that, I should say. Uh, so, yeah, great fruit, nice flower, and... Uh, yeah, it's a pretty tree, a uh, great fall color. Um, so yeah, that's the black gum. There's a few other species around here I wanna show you. We got a, a northern red oak, but first I wanna show you something else. So my house is just down there. So we're just up behind my house. Lots of maples and cherries. Uh, we're getting into the red oaks, like I said. We got a black cherry right here. We have the black gum right here. And these deer do not want to leave. They're there and there. They are just so comfortable here. And anyways, right here we have bunchberry. This is a type of dogwood. Very cool. We have a few different spots of these on the property. They don't get much taller than this. And it looks just like a flowering dogwood, except it's almost like a ground cover. They grow in bunches like this, hence the name. They develop a berry like dogwoods. They develop a flower as well. So it's a really cool plant that thrives in shaded understory, which is exactly where this is right now. And they kind of form colonies like this. You can see they're kind of not taken over, but you can see it. So that's really cool. We got bunchberry right there. And now here we have a northern red oak. Why do I like the northern red oak? Well, I'm glad you asked. I like it because it's an oak. And to me, oaks are kings of the forest. You probably get tired of hearing me say that because I really hype up the oaks a lot. And it's because I think they are. Uh, and what really sold me on that, I always thought that, especially as I got into trees, I realized how they benefit so benefit everything. Uh, but the book that really sold me on oaks is called The Nature of Oaks. It's by uh, Dr. Doug Tallamy, okay? Uh, I'll put a link and I've shared it before in the description and the pinned comment, but uh, I really think you should check it out if you're into this stuff. It's a short read. I think it was like 200 some pages, um, maybe just 200. Not a long read, but boy, it's a great book. They also have audio books of it. Um, and anyways, that really made me love oaks even more. Uh, what a powerhouse they are. But I like the red oak because it's acorns feed many species of wildlife. Um, and it's also a fast growing oak compared to the, the white oak. I still like the white oak better, but the red oaks can grow so fast, so dense, such a, a good wood in such a short time, it's incredible. And um, yeah, why else do I like it? Well, with great wood, the acorns, fast growing, it's an oak, and it doesn't live nearly as long as a white oak can live. Um, but even whenever you might think it's over the hill, right? Sometimes as they get really old, you know, 200 years old around there, might get hollowed out and you think, oh, it needs to come down. I mean, if it's in a spot that's dangerous, then yeah, it probably does. If it's gonna potentially uh, put you or someone else at risk of injury or worse, then yeah, it probably needs to come down. In spots like this, it doesn't need to come down because no one's around. This tree's fine, by the way, but I'm using this as an example. Um, but what's so neat about these oaks, and I've learned this in that book, is it might still have another 50 years and uh, it could be hollowed out. And there's one near my parents. Actually, it's closer to the mini cabin that's like that. 
that has a giant hole in it and it's been like that as long as i remember and it's fine you know it's still going fine and whenever they have those cavities in there it is really helping the ecosystem out in a number of different ways so many different species are dependent on that so that's my little uh little rant about the red oak let's keep moving now and here all along this area oh there's another deer i didn't realize that uh might be one of the ones we've been with for a while but anyways you can see this green all over the place here over in there here and uh, there's some still grass here but there's a big hill over there actually let's let's just zoom in because this is incredible if you see that green i know it's blurry very blurry well that green that is all fan club moss right here. And some people make like, a, not a wreath, but I, I, maybe it is. Some people I know, we've had friends that have taken some and they make like a, some Christmas thing with it. Um, you can tell I'm really into that stuff. But anyways, fan club moss. This is really cool. Obviously it's not a tree, but what's so cool about this, I just read this actually a couple weeks ago. Fan club moss is one of the oldest plants we have. This thing they believe to be 400 years old. Um, and it grows from spores and will not mature until after 20 years. So that means these are 20 years old. I thought that was amazing. Um, and to, to give you an idea, I know oaks, I believe, are 60 years old. I mean, <laughs> 60 million years old. So these are 400 million years old. That's what they believe. I don't know how uh, spot on they are. Here's a cool little fungi that I'm not sure what that is. All right, now we're gonna head in here. We have another tree species that I wanna show you. But yeah, you can see all over the place here is this fan club moss. Really cool. So this half rack we see every day. Oh, there's two bucks. I'm getting surrounded, man. Everywhere I go, I'm trying to make a video on trees. And now I got two bucks here trying to tell me I'm not welcome. I'm, <laughs> I'm 10 yards from him. I don't know if you can tell that, but we're really close. That is funny. I just parked the mule and came over here and these guys must be brothers though. They, they have been hanging out uh, all year long. There's a third one, a third buck. There's these three boys that we always see together. Sorry, it's gonna be a longer video, but I mean, I, I enjoy this stuff. Maybe you don't, maybe you're bored of the deer, but uh, I think it's cool. I'm here talking about trees and uh, these guys are uh, want to be a part of it. So the next species I want to show you, we're just gonna I'm gonna head this way. All right, guys. It is another uh, black tapello, but anyways, it's right here. This white pine. Got a nice white pine right here. We don't have many. This is not the cabin in West Virginia, but here we have a nice white pine. And why do I like white pines? Why are they beneficial? Well, one is those needles uh, make great bird nests, everything like that, right? A lot of species uh, love those needles, pretty dependent on them. Great food source, but it's also a great uh, habitat for a lot of things. A lot of things want to live in here because of the great cover. It's also a great like windbreaker, you know, um, wind barrier. But anyways, this one in particular, for years there have been barred owls that have nested in here. As early as this spring, I saw one out of here. And I know in the past there have been a lot as well. Um, neighbor Cliff and his wife have seen them um, quite a bit. I've heard them a lot and I know I've seen them fly away from here as well when approaching the tree. I don't know if they're still here, but I know for many years there have been barred owls in this white pine. So there we have it. Look at these guys. They really want to be a part of the video. You guys follow us on the channel? This is crazy. <laughs> They're really interesting. Yeah, normally you see me at my house. This one here, 
tried getting in the garden the other day. Jumped right over the fence. Which normally they don't like those tight enclosures. They don't like to jump into something where they feel like they're gonna be trapped. Fortunately, he didn't get anything and we've had so much from the garden this year. I'm not, uh, not too worried about it, but it is amazing how their colors starting to change already. His has not. His is starting to turn more gray. He kind of is on the neck, but yeah, a lot of video of deer tonight. Let's see what he's eating. Oh, I think he's just uh, pounding on some young saplings, it looks like. Probably an oak. That's why they never regenerate, because of these guys. Because we have far too many of you guys. What is happening? The more I talk, the more interested they become. There's that white pine, and right here we have a really nice deerberry bush. And there's a bunch more in this area, but here are the berries. Not quite ripe. I think they're gonna turn like purple, black, purplish, blackish, but uh, a lot of berries on this thing. I will definitely be back to try it because I've never had them. Oh yeah, it's loaded. Here you can see here. But I will be back to try it and to grow it. I wanna get the seeds and grow these. Um, I like growing stuff from seed, but yeah, this thing is loaded with berries. All right, we are about a hundred yards from the clearing this way, uh, where the mini cabin is. My house is this way, and I'm pretty far from my house now, uh, on foot. I left the side by side of ways over there. Um, but anyways, I want to tell you a story. We got a nice maple here in 2020, February 2020. I tapped my first maple tree and March 2020 is when COVID happened and everything went crazy. Uh, at least as I say, whenever everything shut down. Um, and so I was just worried about maple syrup. I was working a whole lot of hours at FedEx and uh, after work, when it'd be dark, I'd be out here with the headlamp collecting sap. Four years ago, this is just to show you how much changes in, uh, in just four years. I could kind of identify maples without leaves. I, I could, but maples can vary a lot by bark and there were no leaves then. So I don't even know why, but for some reason I decided to tap trees here. I tapped some close to my house, but I tapped a lot out this trail. I guess I wanted along the trail. Meanwhile, I had walked by thousands of maples. I also wanted some bigger ones. I didn't know a lot and I'm like, oh, it has to be big. So I would tap just the bigger maples I would find like this. And it got a lot of sap. I used five gallon buckets every day after work, late at night, whatever. I would be out here with a headlamp and it would just be a muddy mess because it's that February, March, and it was the muddiest time. I'm carrying, falling every time I would fall, get covered in mud. Oh, it was rough, always raining, just a mess. But anyways, when I come out here, I always think of that, you know, how funny that is that I passed a thousand maples to get here and here I was grabbing sap from out here. No, it was fun though, never forget it. Here we have another shag bark hickory. Although the bark is not shaggy. And there's a couple others down in there. How do I know it's a shag bark hickory? Because I originally thought it was a pig nut hickory. Pig nut and shag bark are both uh, very similar out of all the hickories. Uh, they're usually gonna have five leaves like this has. They're gonna have hairless stalks like this has. So that right there is difficult because those two, they both have the same, right? Both have five leaves typically and hairless stalks typically. And when they're young, their bark is smooth. So three in a row that they both have. The way I can tell the difference here is the leaf stalk is more stout on the shag bark hickory, thicker than on the pig nut hickory. The leaf stalk is going to be more slender than this. That's, that's what I know. So I'm pretty certain that this is a shag bark. I was excited and thought it was a pig nut, but I believe this is a shag bark and it just is not shaggy yet. And there's no nuts. The nut would be a great way to tell. For sure, but I'm almost positive 
this is a shag bark and not a pig nut. Well, with that, we're going to end the video. Uh, this was all over the place. I'm really trying to stick to um, staying on topic, but between the deer, the goats, all the cool plants, really today's video is just kind of a walk in the woods. We almost are to my dad's. We're just short of the cabin and the clearing. So the next video will be the last video because we're pretty much picking up from the clearing to my dad's house. And I would guess we'll get about 10 more species. Um, today, I think we only got four tree species. I showed you a lot of other cool stuff that I think is cool. Um, so we will wrap this up in one more video. But for today, I think that's it. Don't know how long this is going to be. I hope it's not too long. We will finish the video and we'll have one more on the walk to my dad's. Then after that, I want to dive into individual species. Uh, I appreciate all the support on the Oriental Bittersweet video. I'm thinking we'll kind of bounce back and forth. We'll do a deep dive into a hickory, how to identify it, everything about hickories, and then a deep dive into invasive, then back to a native. That's the stuff I like. Uh, hopefully you do too. And I'm sure, you know, a lot of these, that's the cool thing. A lot of these species have a big range, right? Uh, and I saw that on the Oriental Bittersweet video. I was so surprised how many people had that from up to Ontario to down south all over the place. So, um, yeah, that's the plan. Thanks for watching guys. Thanks for all your support. And, uh, we'll see you on the next video where we're going to finish this walk guaranteed.